resistance training, which can be defined as um, the activities that promote muscle working against a given force. And that can be accomplished through lifting weights is often thought of as the most uh, common uh, view of it. But uh, I mean, it can be body weight exercise, can push ups, uh, body weight squats can be uh, forms of resistance training. You can use bands, uh, resistance bands, you can use cable machines and other types of units. So uh, and it can be integrated. In, I mean, there's yoga that involves resistance where they do various. So anything where your body, your muscles are working against a, a given force. And to answer your question, then, if you engage in resistance training that substantially challenges the muscles over time, you can not only stave off sarcopenia, but you can maintain more. Mu there's certainly people in their 60s, 70s, and even 80s that have more muscle than they had when they were 20, when they started resistance training later in life, and uh, and that have more muscle than 20 year olds do, uh, you know, at a given age. So um, I would say that uh, the key, in my humble opinion, to staving off sarcopenia is resistance training. Well, I love that. It's really positive, right? Because I think often in this area, everything's very depressing about the idea. There's nothing going to do. You're going to get older. You're going to lose everything. Um, and I, I think what, what you're saying is actually there's a lot you can do and it's it's not too late, right? If you didn't do any exercise in your 20s, you're saying it's not, oh, that's too bad. I love this idea of being in my 60s or 70s and having more muscles than I, I had in my in my 20s. Um, there's, I just want to interrupt and say there is research. We actually carried out a meta-analysis on the oldest of old, which were people 75 years and older who were sedentary and given resistance training. And a meta-analysis is a pooling of all the studies on the topic. Um, there was marked increases in strength, and we see hypertrophy increases in muscle growth differences. Uh, and these are short periods of time, by the way. We're talking eight to 12 weeks. Again, in 75 plus. So uh, these are minimum 75 years old. Could you explain a little bit, because I think we sort of jumped over a little bit, this link between doing this resistance training and preventing your muscles shrinking? Like, why does that happen? How does these two things fit together? When you uh, resistance train, so you're applying force to the muscles, the forces that you're applying to the muscles are converted into chemical signals. These chemical signals carry out protein synthesis. They create more protein to the body to produce more muscle proteins, which give you larger muscles. When you are resistance training uh, at a intense level, you are challenging the muscles to a greater extent than when you are walking. So will walking be better than lying down all day? Of course. So if you're just lying down all day, if you're in, if you're bedridden and then you get up and walk around, you that will help to build some muscle. But it's going to be very minimal. The body only builds muscle to the extent that it's challenged. To uh, achieve greater muscle, you have to provide a greater stimulus to it. All the body cares about is survival. So Maintaining muscle is energetically expensive, and we are still living in the bodies of our Paleolithic ancestors. So uh, the body doesn't realize that we can just go out for food whenever we want, et cetera, and it tries to be resourceful. So to maintain muscle will be energetically expensive, which would have a negative survival impact when you are scavenging food in, in the historic days. Um so to bring this back home, when you're lying down all day, let's say you're just not doing anything, you're very inactive, the body realizes it doesn't need this or, or thinks it doesn't need this extra muscle and it's energetically taxing to, to keep it. So why bother? Why would we need to maintain it if we're not going to be using it? That is the use it or lose it principle. When you're lifting weights that challenge the body because you might want to talk about, you don't necessarily need to lift heavy weights. But when you're lifting weights that ultimately become challenging, the body realizes that or thinks that it needs to be able to maintain muscle to carry out these activities for survival. And again, everything revolves around what the body is perceiving as its survival needs. It's really interesting because it's very similar to a lot of discussions we have about nutrition, where also we have this problem where 
we sort of have these bodies that were built for this permanent fear of starvation and famine. And we're living in an environment where, you know, there's a Starbucks and a McDonald's on, on every corner and it's all misset. And I think you're saying exactly the same thing about um, exercise and our muscles, that our body is worried about the, the cost of supporting these muscles. So it's constantly trying to shrink them. Whereas actually, we'd really like to keep them really high. And that sadly, there is no magic pill and you've got to um, do something that really puts them under strain if you want to keep the level of muscles that will keep us healthier. Correct. Time. And I would add too, just since you bring up nutrition, that uh, consuming protein is an important component as well. That uh, protein, the consumption of protein is used, the amino acids from it are used to build muscle. So when protein is deficient, uh, you will, at least up to a certain point, you will compromise your ability to gain muscle. But the most important factor is resistance training. Uh, you can still build muscle even with quite suboptimal protein intakes, but you're not going to, it will compromise the magnitude of your gains. And does that mean that as people age, you think they should be um, conscious about increasing the amount of protein they eat than they might be thinking about well, otherwise? Yeah. So there's several things. Um, number one, there's uh, something called the leucine threshold. Leucine is one of the uh, amino acids, essential amino acids, and it's been shown to kind of kickstart the uh, uh, protein synth uh, synthetic process after resistance training. And uh, thus, uh, as you get older, your body becomes less sensitive to leucine and that generally speaking, you need to uh, consume more protein in a given setting, in a given sitting uh, to hit your leucine threshold. The most important thing is the resistance training. Again, you will compromise gains to an extent, but it's not like you won't get gains if you don't hit your leucine threshold. But it is important that uh, as older pe people get older, you want to try to squeeze out as much as you can because it becomes harder to build muscle. And Brad, is that like a steady decline over time or is that more, I have a 15 year old and he's basically putting on muscle by the week, like just watch, you know, just, just watch him. And I, on the other hand, train all the time and I feel like I completely plateaued and it's incredibly hard to put any muscle on. I'm in my late forties. Is that going to be much worse, you know, in my sixties and seventies? What's the, what does the science say? It's very gradual. Uh, so generally speaking, and there's not much you could do, uh, let's say hormonally, men will generally lose uh, 1% or sort of testosterone after about the age of 40. But these are averages. Different people have genetics is going to enter into that and other factors. Women, it's even more pronounced because women, when they go through menopause, lose estrogen. Estrogen basically is considered to be the male, the, the um, female component of testosterone to facilitate muscle building. At least there's some good evidence uh, to indicate that. And the reductions in estrogen are huge. Uh, so it's a tenfold reduction in, in estrogen production for women, which compromises their ability to build muscle even more. Uh, so that in itself is going to be a factor. Chronic inflammatory effects, so the body produces these inflammatory cytokines as people get older on a chronic basis, and um, injuries can affect that. Uh, conditions such as osteoarthritis can be involved. So there's just a multitude of factors when you age that are kind of working against you. And it sounds like particularly as a woman going through menopause, that there's like a big shift then in your ability to maintain or grow muscles after menopause compared to before is that did i understand that right the the men are going to have a more gradual decline in testosterone let's say from the age of 40 you just start seeing a shift it does seem to accelerate though it, when you get into your when it gets into his 70s plus uh, can have even a greater downward uh, linear tra uh, trajectory where women over a period of several years during menopause really have this drastic drop in estrogen. <clears throat> and, uh, and that seemingly uh, does, again, compromise to a greater extent muscle building ability. But as I said, uh, it does not mean you can't build muscle. Both men and women equally can achieve very uh, good gains.